Before asking a question, look for the answer within yourself. If you search, often you will find the answer on your own. Lifelong Commitment By 1967, Ajahn Mahabua's mother and the other Mechis, practicing under Meiji Gao's guidance, were firmly established in the principles of meditation. With the John Mahabua's approval, Manchi Gao respectfully took leave of him and returned to the nunnery at Ban Hue Sai. During her long stay at Ban Tad Forest Monastery, Manchi Gao had worried about her sisters there and kept in contact with them. She traveled several times a year to visit with the nuns at Ban Hue Sai, bringing much needed supplies to supplement their stock of basic requisites. Now, with the John Mahabua's blessing, she moved back to take up residence at the nunnery she founded. Manchi Gao continued to live there until she passed away 24 years later. In moving back to Ban Hue Sai, Manchi Gao resumed her duties as the spiritual head of the nunnery. Life there had remained quiet and simple, with an emphasis on developing mindfulness in every daily activity. All the nuns adhered to the strict guiding principles that Manchi Gao laid down for them and conscientiously observed the eight moral precepts. In her quiet yet forceful way, she impressed upon everyone the virtues of renunciation. Now that you have ordained and come to live in this nunnery with me and the other nuns, you must always think, speak, and act with the noblest intentions. You have renounced the mundane world for the purpose of training yourself in the art of cleansing your heart. Don't concern yourself with the worldly life you have left behind. It's time to cease worrying about home and family. She admonished the nuns never to talk about indecent matters, but instead to only talk about matters of real substance. She wanted them to be exemplary monastics who were patient in their endurance of hardship, diligent in their practice of meditation, and always striving to learn the truth about themselves. They were not to fret about lost opportunities of the past or anticipate future rewards. Such thoughts would only deceive them. She warned them to fight against tendencies to laziness and not simply surrender to their pillows. They were to watch their thoughts carefully and search only for the truth that lay within their own hearts. She wanted her students to trust the way of the Lord Buddha. At the same time, she encouraged them to focus intently on each forward step as they sought to find their own path. Because that path lies within the hearts and minds of each individual, it was up to each of her students to search within herself to discover the way to transcend suffering. She encouraged them to remain tough-minded and diligent until they reached the final goal. Each time that she sensed the nuns slacking, she challenged them to evaluate their progress. Many of you have been studying with me for a long time, but how many real successes can you count? Your present attachments far outnumber your accomplishments. If you don't believe me, ask yourself, how many attachments have I actually cut off? Even the celestial devas are born only to die and be born again. Just like you, they are attached to the importance of their fleeting lives. It's just this longing for birth, this longing for life, which causes all beings to be continually reborn in the world of suffering. There is no room for negligence in the spiritual life. You are now striving for moral virtue and true happiness. Many of us, both old and young, are living this life together. We must all patiently endure the inevitable hardships of a nun's simple existence without becoming lazy or disgruntled. Let love and compassion be your ready response to every situation. Be gentle and deferential to your spiritual sisters and accept criticism from your teacher gracefully. When I complain about your behavior, understand that I am teaching you. My criticisms are voiced for your own good. It is imperative that you show respect to your teacher and all your fellow nuns. A junior nun is expected to bow to her seniors, even if that nun is senior merely by a single day. As long as you cheerfully accept your proper status in the community, we will all live together in a spirit of contentment. Love, compassion, and sympathetic joy will develop and expand until they fill our hearts, spreading out to each other and to all living beings everywhere. Ajahn Mahabua made regular visits to the nunnery, and often lauded Mechi Gao as an outstanding example for nuns and lay devotees to emulate. In truth, her practice of Tamma was a model which all Buddhists should follow. He invited her disciples to reflect on her exceptional courage and resolve, and on her supreme wisdom and compassion. They were the qualities that buoyed her practice and steadied her course, and finally delivered her to the deathless state beyond all possibility of deterioration. 
transcending both suffering and happiness, Mechiga practiced the Dhamma teaching of the fully enlightened one, the Lord Buddha, to its ultimate transcendence.